today on CityCast Boise. 158 years ago, Boise pulled an epic heist. We stole the capital from Lewiston. Jimmy Dawson is here to tell us about the messy politics behind this story. Turns out some North Idahoans, including Jimmy, still have salty feelings about a plot that happened a long time ago. It's Wednesday, December 21st, 2022. I'm Emma Arnold, and this is CityCast Boise. Hi, Jimmy. Thanks for being here. Hey, Emma. Good to be back. I uh, hope you did some deep breathing before this episode and you're ready to, to get into it because I'm wondering, do you feel like you're betraying your hometown by living in the city that stole its capital? Mm-hmm. Trust me, uh, it definitely uh, bubbles up a whole lot of anger within me whenever I think <laughs> about it. But it's true. Like I grew up, you know, 18 years being like, ah, Boise, Boise. Also, we call it Boise up there, just so y'all know, and that's how it should be pronounced. I'm, I mean, it's very controversial. We've talked about it on the show before, but I'm, I say Boise, I say Boise on uh, air, so that I don't get shouted at. But <laughs> mostly, I say Boise, so I do the same thing, no problem. So let's talk about it. In 1863, Lewiston became Idaho's first territorial capital, and how did that happen? Yeah. So a, a lot of people came over. Uh, we should obviously say this was, uh, you know, Nez Perce land. They had uh, a whole lot of um, land in sort of north central Idaho. Then you had like southern Washington and northern Oregon. And then you had white settlers come in after the core of discovery with Lewis and Clark. But they came here mostly to try to get gold. Uh, They were mining gold up in kind of that Pierce um, area further up the Clearwater from Lewiston. And it was kind of like a central location where eventually you would have steamboats running up and down to try to move like farming crops, whatever, uh, to move that further toward uh, toward the ocean. Yeah. So a lot of people started, you know, moving in because of the gold and the farming. But by 1864, Boise became the capital and it was moved. It was moved. It, I, I say it was stolen because it literally was <laughs> stolen. So uh, this is still you got to keep in mind, this is still territorial days. So Idaho was not a state. Uh, and originally that Lewiston area in northern Idaho was part of the Washington Territory, technically. But with the gold rush up here kind of not being so much of a gold rush. And when I say up here, I mean uh, Lewiston and, and that whole Clearwater area. They found more gold and more, you know, valuable things to mine down in like kind of the Idaho City area and, uh, you know, the Treasure Valley, really. And so that's where all the people went. The people down in Boise were like, well, we got more people now. And why aren't we the capital? We should be the capital. And so when I spoke to uh, Stephen Branting, who's kind of like a local historian, um, he was big in the Lewiston education scene back when I was still going to school. You know, he was telling me how there was literally a territorial seal and some papers designating Lewiston as the capital. And, you know, they saw what was coming, um, that the Boise contingent was going to, you know, try to try to move the capital and they put those documents and stuff into the lewiston city jail uh kind of locked it in a safe and then clinton dewitt smith who was kind of the territorial secretary he named himself active or, or acting governor and brought federal troops with him to kind of seize all of that uh he broke into the jail he broke the lock um grabbed all the papers and then whipped out of town on a ferry uh, back to Boise to install the new capital there. So not just you who felt like it was stolen, kind of a <laughs> like a pretty broad opinion there. I mean, legitimately. But then, of course, uh, in 1866, you've got the Territorial Supreme Court uh, basically saying, nah, that that's cool. That's fine. We're not going to write an opinion. But yeah, that was that was legal. It's cool. So it sounds super messy. And it sounds like the the politics behind the act of the territorial legislature also got like pretty, pretty wild, didn't it? Yeah, they weren't. I mean, the people up in North Idaho and North Central Idaho, they they really weren't down with, <laughs> you know, the what they saw as kind of usurpers uh, coming and taking um, that power away from them. And so much so that, like, it was bitter for decades afterwards. Uh, the people who live up there uh, back in the day 
even lobbied Congress to make them part of the Washington Territory again. They're like, yeah, okay, well, if uh, we're going to have this capital, you know, hundreds of miles south of us, you know, it, it's completely different, uh, different culture, different priorities, things like that. We'll just go into Washington. And the House and Senate in the 1880s, I believe, passed that bill. But the acting governor of Idaho, uh, the territory of Idaho, I guess, was really good friends with Grover Cleveland, the president at the time. And he's just like, yeah, keep that in your drawer. Don't sign this. Please do not sign this. And he didn't. Oh, wow. Uh, so, so that's why, you know, northern Idaho is is still part of Idaho. Oh, wow. Thanks to Grover Cleveland. Huh. So you grew up in Lewiston, and is this something your teachers taught growing up? Because I never, I didn't know any of this until I was an adult. And was it a big part of your, like, Idaho's history lectures growing up? The details, not so much. But I always knew from, like, a fairly young age, because I would always see the sign, like, Idaho's territorial capital, Lewiston, you know, welcome to Lewiston. Mm -hmm. and, and I would ask my parents about it. And my dad, of course, you know, he's just like, yep, they stole it from us. Boise stole it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so people are still salty up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. Like most people in North Idaho could tell you about this fact and maybe would have be salty still. Uh, maybe. I would say like in the Lewiston area specifically. Yeah. I don't know how, how much play it gets, you know, if you go to Coeur d'Alene. staying out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll be their own, uh, you know, readout uh, area up there. Yeah. It's funny. I just think it's interesting that like most people from Southern Idaho don't even know about this part of our history. It usually takes someone like you from North Idaho bringing it up. So why do you think that is? Um, I, I think it's, you know, partially geographical. Like, I hadn't even ever been to Boise until I was in high school, um, just because it was like the same distance uh, driving from Lewiston to Portland or Seattle. So it's like, OK, why, why would I go to Boise when I could go to Portland or Seattle? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, not that Boise doesn't have lovely things here, but, you know, bigger city, more more things to do in, in Portland and Seattle at the time. So I don't know. I think there's that big geographical distance. And even think about it back then, too. Sure, it takes like five, six hours to drive um, nowadays. But we're talking days and maybe even weeks back in the 1800s, right? Uh, before, you know, there might have been total railroad connectivity. Uh, we're talking wagons or people on foot, even. I'm curious what was going through your head, you know, young Jimmy's head when you saw Boise for the first time. Did you think, oh, the big city, I'm going to live here someday. Were you impressed? What did you think? No, I, I, I think that I was mostly just because <laughs> I came down for like a journalism conference and I think it was at the Riverside in Garden City. So not even technically Boise, oh. <laughs> uh, w which is funny because uh, I didn't really realize that at the time. But I, I didn't really have any impressions because we just stayed at the hotel. It's funny because a lot of my, you know, not northern northern, but like Salmon, Lemhi County family, they consider Boise to be such a big city. And like when they drive through, they're just like, oh, my gosh, it's so stressful. It's horrible. I can't wait to get back up to the country. And so I growing up thought Boise was a really big city. Uh, until I actually went to a big city and was like, oh, <laughs> we're a town. I've got it. Got it. <laughs> you mean when you when, where you actually had to spend like $20 uh, or $30 a day to park somewhere uh, <laughs> instead of like, you know, two bucks downtown uh, a block away and you still complain about having to walk? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or at, like there you actually had to look for parking. And I was like, this is a madhouse. You know? It's like, what do we do? <laughs> yes. Well, let's imagine life with you at Lewiston as the capital. What do you think that would look like? Uh, I think it'd look really weird. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I've lived in another state capital that had about as many people as Lewiston. I lived in Dover, Delaware for five years um, after college. And I don't know. It's, it's kind of goofy. Like, people there don't really even think of it as a capital city. Kind of like Salem, you know? Like, not that Salem's super tiny, but I know... Whenever I've performed in Salem, Oregon, people in Portland are always kind of like, OK, well, they shouldn't be the capital, obviously. Like there's <laughs> Portland is salty that Salem is the capital. So I imagine if Lewis and was the capital, Boise would probably be be like, eh, I mean, you know, come on. Oh, totally. Because they have far, we have far more people down here in Boise than there are in Lewiston. I mean, we're talking like thirty five thousand people. Not to mention that, like, uh, when I asked Stephen Branting that question, uh, when I interviewed him, I was like, do you do you wish that 
Lewiston was the capital. And he's like, no, absolutely <laughs> not, because he likes getting somewhere in three minutes. And it's true. Like, yeah, sure. Lewiston's like spread out geographically a little bit. So three minutes is a little bit of an exaggeration. But it, I mean, rush hour is like you'll you'll get somewhere five minutes later. You know, it's not like Boise where you're waiting, you know, light after light after light if you're on Myrtle or front. Mm hmm. What about you? If Lewiston was the capital, would you be there as a political reporter? Would you be in Lewiston? I don't know. It's it's kind of weird because I grew up there. Not that I want to dunk on Lewiston too much, but I, I like that there's more to do down here. But if Lewiston had been the capital for, you know, 100 plus years or whatever, who's to say that, you know, we wouldn't have just as many people up there? Yeah, true. What's your favorite thing about Lewiston? I think it's gorgeous up there. I mean, the hills aren't as tall as they are here in, in, in Boise with the foothills, uh, but they're almost more dramatic um, because you go from like 500, 600 feet, you know, above sea level, like right at the confluence of the Snake and Clearwater. And then you just kind of jut up straight like two 2,000 feet. Um, if you go south of town uh, up the Snake, then you can see some like... Uh, Native American pictographs uh, that are, you know, 10,000 years old or whatever. And that's really fun. Um, and you're really close to a lot of great uh, other great outdoors spaces. Other than that, there are a few good restaurants. I'll, I'll give it that. <laughs> Do you get upset when people talk about the smell? No, because I understand it. Yeah. I mean, because it can be shocking. I mean, you know, if you if you didn't grow up around there to drive out into town for the first time and smell that can be kind of shocking. Totally. Yeah. I mean, all the all the kids on sports teams who would come from, you know, <laughs> Coeur d'Alene or whatever, it's just like, oh, it's the <laughs> armpit of Idaho. Uh, and it, it, it does smell, you know, it, you know, I, I am used to it, obviously, even though I haven't lived there for several years. Um, you know, I, I don't notice it that much. Uh, and it has gotten better uh, since I was a kid, that's for sure. But it was it was doubly uh like pretty pretty gnarly when we had the uh composting facility up on the top of the hill uh and then you would have potlatch kind of the smell go up the river dip down by main street and then that the composting facility would just go down and settle uh Ooh. especially in the summer <laughs> when it's like 110 degrees outside it was pretty pretty rank what a bouquet. What a <laughs> you, yes. well, you really did a great description of that. Well, Jimmy, thanks for coming on and letting us know about this interesting Idaho fact. And I'll think of you the next time I drive through Lewiston and see that beautiful view and hold my breath the whole way. Plug your nose. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. And a little good news before you head out. KTVB is reporting that the Boise Bicycle Project gave away over 500 bikes this month. And not just any two-wheelers. 200 volunteers spent months turning donations into customized dream bikes based on kids' drawings and descriptions. The event also provided kids and their families with winter clothes and food. Over the 16 years the event has existed, the organization has given away over 10,000 bikes. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, why not leave us a review? And don't forget to subscribe to our Hey Boise newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye.